Hello. Good afternoon, everybody. First of all, thank you very much for the opportunity to give this oral presentation. Second, let's clarify I'm not Caspar. Oh, apologies <laughs> again. <laughs> no, it's like Caspar, unfortunately, could not come over to, to Japan. So uh, I'm Juan Muñoz. I'm a colleague of Caspar, and I will give the presentation on his behalf. So I think uh, we are all very much aware that uh, productivity from our hosting counts has increased a lot over the last years in such a way that now we're drying off cows, we're drying off cows with milk production that is more or less the peak of production that they had in 1975. So we have a drastic change in the cows that we have to dry off. But if there is one area where I think most of us find that uh, when we're talking with dairy producers, it's very conservative, it's all the area about drying off. It's, a, it's something where if you ask a farmer, maybe he will tell you that he's drying off the animals like his father used to do. And second, how many times I hear from many of you that the dry cow is a forgotten cow. So here we have a major change in the cow and an absolutely, let's say, minimum change in the way we do things at drying off. Besides that, we are all very much aware about the things that they are changing the way we are handling the cows at the time at dry off concerning antibiotic therapy. For many years, we told the, the farmers that what you have to do is to treat every single cow with an antibiotic tube. Now, we are trying to change that, and we say you have to be selective. You need to choose which cow you have to, to treat with an antibiotic. So here we have a change in the cow, a change in the way we want to, let's say, treat these animals concerning antibiotics, but at the same time, uh, we need to dry off these animals. So should we continue drying off animals in the way we have done until now? I think we can agree that we have two ways of drying off animals, what we could call abroad dry off and what we call gradual. Abroad would mean that we don't do any sort of intervention in this animal. And gradual would mean that we are doing something in order to reduce the milk production of this animal. What can we do in order to reduce milk production? Either we can reduce feeding, as a consequence, if I don't get energy, I don't produce milk. Or second, we can reduce uh, the number of milkings that we do in the animal. So before, I mean, you can enter into the discussion about what should be the right way to dry off an animal. I think the best thing to do is, like, do we know how things are being done? Okay, not at farm level, but in my zone, in my country. In order to try to find out, it's like, what type of methodology is being applied for drying off an animal, you can follow. I think one of the main approaches has been followed is to question. I think it was presented before. It's like how a questionnaire was launched to the Finnish farmers to try to identify and to get to know what methodology they're following. I think there have been different uh, articles published where uh, data is presented. What we try to do in this case is to follow a different approach. It's like uh, we, we were uh, in collaboration with a, with a group. In, it's based in the Netherlands. It's Dairy Data Warehouse, which is a group that collects data from different farms uh, all over the Netherlands. And then the idea was uh, how we could, based on that data, if we could try to define the type of drying off methodology that was being used in these farms. And second is like, what would be the impact of the dry off methodology in the level of milk production? Just uh, f to give an introduction about, okay, we work in the Netherlands because uh, this is the place where dairy data warehouse uh, has the, the biggest and the largest uh, database in terms of information. So for some of you to know, it's like, uh, I mean, uh, Holland is well known uh, for the dairy industry. There are about 1.8 million dairy cows uh, distributed in around 17,000 farms. Their output is around about 14 billion liters of uh, milk. And uh, around 80% of those farms uh, will be uh, having an outdoor uh, grazing system during some part of the year. If you look here, this is the map of the Netherlands. Uh, we, we work with data from uh, over 42,000 dairy cows coming from 656 farms. And you can see that they are spread all over uh, the country in the Netherlands. And then it's like in order to, we define two proxies based on the, on the daily milk meter data from the last 30 days prior to dry off. And then that will be, so two proxies for abroad and gradual and we'll have a two-step classification. First, we would do what we call an expert based manual labeling. So the experts work on 15, around 1,500 uh, of these lactation curves. 
in order to define what would be gradual and abrupt. And after that, we would use an algorithm, an algorithm in order to classify all the other lactation cars that we were there. So here you have uh, the results uh, from this work that was done based on the existing data. Around 32% of the animals were classified as having a gradual dry off and 68% on having an abrupt dry off. And something that uh, is also very important to see in the, in the graphs above, on the left and on, on, on the right hand side, is that you don't have a, one farm is a, in most cases a abrupt and one farm is gradual. What you will find is that uh, when we connect the data from the different cows to the farm, you can see that it's like a, you will have a farms where yes, it's like a more or less 100% of our animals are going to a gradual dry off, but you can see in the graph how you have in every farm that they will apply the two different types of methodology. And very likely this will be driven by the level of milk production of the different cows that they have there. So you can see how uh, uh, it's very clear uh, how the same applies for abrupt and gradual dry off. Also what we look is like uh, now focusing more on the gradual dry off. It's like what we identified is two clusters of gradual dry off. You will have uh, the one, let's say in the yellow color, which is the one with the faster decline and then you have the other one with the slower decline. So more or less uh, you can uh, interpret this, that there is some farms where the intervention in order to reduce uh, milk production starts much earlier than in the others where the intervention is, is done much more when they are close to the dry off period. So in terms of results and conclusions, it's like we found that uh, based on this set of data that was available and that we could work with, we had, classified that around 68% of the animals were being dry abruptly. Around 32% of the animals were having a gradual dry off management. We identified two clusters, the one I said to you, the slow and the, and the fast decline on dry off. And the average milk yield that we found at dry off, according to the classification model, in the group of abrupt was 13 kilos, and the one of gradual was just under 10 kilos, 9.8 kilos. Uh, the level of uh, milk production, I mean, this data was collected during the year 2016. Like, uh, this could have an impact on the level of milk production, and the reason why I say that is like 2016 was the year where we faced one of the worst uh, crises in the milk industry. So that could have influenced the way the farmers were handling the cows in times to control, uh, I mean, cost of production versus output. So. That's why I would say that it's like a, there could be some, let's say, bias towards having a lower level of milk production because of the particular year when this data was collected. And I think, uh, yes, uh, what should be open for discussion is like, uh, yeah, when you, go, when you choose for a gradual dry off, uh, basically you are losing milk because uh, you are decreasing the, the potential that this potential amount of milk that this cow will be producing. But the reason, there are some reasons why the farmer is deciding to use it. And uh, the idea is that uh, what we need to identify is like, okay, what should be the best way that the farmers should dry off their animals? I mean, uh, I don't have the numbers here, but uh, I, I, I searched uh, the last days about what data was available, about uh, what percentage of animals are being dry off in one way or another. Uh, we did some work uh, and we found that uh, in France, uh, by, this was done by questionnaire, we got that around 17% uh, of the cows uh, were being dry off uh, gradu uh, gradually. We did the same in Denmark and there we got in the, in the population that we interviewed was 80%. Just recently I read on the vet record in UK it was being published that it was around 16% of the cows that were being dry off gradually. And, uh, Previous uh, article in the vet record from Germany, from northern part of Germany, they were talking about 27%. And today we heard that in Finland it was around 96% of the animals that were being dry off uh, gradually. So we can see a huge diversity there. And then uh, the reason is like, okay, what should be the best way to, to go? I think first we should know what is happening in our country, zone, region, or even our veterinary practice. Okay, what are they doing? And second, what should be the best way? And then in terms of, uh, yeah, uh, 
potential developments uh, or alternatives like, uh, yeah, could it be possible uh, to maintain the benefits of a uh, abrupt dry off? And by that, that means having the whole potential of milk production. But uh, let's say, but keeping all the good positive things for the producer. So these are things that I think uh, they are open for discussion. I mean, my talk was about uh, the work that we did to try to identify in the Netherlands, but I believe that what is important is like once you know what is happening, okay, what should be the best way to move forward? Especially in a situation where our cows will produce more and more every year. And as it has been said, the trend for the future is to go for selective dry cow therapy. So we need to see how we merge all this together. Well, thank you very much and I'm open for any questions.